afternoon, gentlemen. We are most grateful to you for allowing us to film this festival. We've seen some very colorful scenes. But before we continue, I'd like to know what is the significance of this um, celebration? Um, thank you very much. And uh, we thank all the listeners and welcome them. You know, this is part of the, an extension of the Buluk Fiok Festival held annually in Sandema every December. Now, you know, we are far away from Buluk. That is our hometown. And a lot of people don't find it easy to travel home. So we decided to organize this festival, draw all of us in the diaspora to come in, celebrate, and then remind them that they cannot get lost. So that we prepare, and if it comes December, everybody's fine. We remember and go home for it. Yeah. So is there any difference between this celebration and what you do up home in Sandema? Obviously, yes. Um, this is just an exhibition of what we do at home. What we do in Buluk, and for that matter, Sandema, is deeper than this. Of course, we cannot do that here. So we are just exhibiting what we normally do in Buluk, that is Sandema, to show to those who are not able to go home, our children, there are people here who are married to other guys, Akans and all that. They have never been home. So this is an opportunity for them to see what a Busa person is, what belongs to Busa. This festival is very rich and we think that we should sell it to the world. Yeah. Going by what you said, who or what is a Busa person, if you may elaborate? Oh, I mean somebody who comes from Busa district, both Busa south and Busa north. You know, we have two districts. But a Busa person is who? The one who belongs to both districts. The Busa land. Let's say Busa land. Let me put it that way. So somebody who comes from there. Of course, we have people who are less, They are also welcome. And we have people who are also fully Busas. That's mother and father. We are all here together. Yes. What are the um, characteristics of a Busa person? What, what, when he says, I'm a Bulsa, what character can identify you as a Bulsa? Or what are the hallmarks of being a Bulsa? Thank you very much. And this question is very wonderful. You know what? If you're a Bulsa man, you are very honest, you are straightforward, you are incorruptible, you are, I mean, brave. Whatever qualities you think about, our culture teaches us to stand upright and defend ourselves. That's why it's not surprising we conquered slave raiders in the north. Uh, Samori and Babatu met their demise in the Bursa land. We, are, we don't yield to conquest. We are very proud. We stand firm. People must take us to be violent. We are not violent. We react to insults. We react to misdemeanor. But honestly, we are straightforward. We are honest. It's not surprising that you know, those days, when someone needs a, a trusted person, he looks for a Bulsa man. That's why we are. Yeah. So, have you been able to transmit uh, these values to the generation here? Because, as you said yourself, some people have married outside your community. Some may have married others of the community, but they live here. Children have been born here, even grandchildren, who may have never have grown up north. And nowadays, you know that cultures are changing fast. How are you transmitting these values to the younger generations? That's very good. That's very good. Indeed, with uh, cross cultural studies, everybody can tell you that things cannot be still. There are those um, corrupted developments that seep in and out, just like the Ghanaian society. We, today we are talking about serious armed robberies in Ghana. It is not part of Ghana. But today, look at what is happening. Even um, highway robberies and all those things in Ghana today. They, they are not part of Ghanaian culture. If you know Ghana, Ghana is a very peaceful place. But because our borders are open and we have people coming in and going out, this has happened. So is it also with the Bursa system. Like we talk, cross marriages, um, uh, traveling down south, even abroad, we sort of copy other people's uh, attitudes. And it is something that I believe a festival like this would hi highlight and try to correct. That's why a festival like this coming here we we'll try to um, remind people of who we are, what we stand for, and that everybody should try and conform 
in a way that we can always be proud of ourselves. Yeah. Thank you. And also, I would also like to ask you, um, these characteristics of being honest, being brave, being upright, which belong to the Bosa people, how are you going to help the wider Ghanaian society to also tap into these attributes? It's exactly what we are doing. We are creating a forum now. Whoever wishes to come, can be here. Whatever we need to share with the outside world, we will share. And whatever the outside world wishes to share with us, that is of course positive. We accept. Of course, whichever is negative, we are poor. So we invite people, because we are going to make it a yearly affair. So we invite people to come and see and hear for themselves. And I believe that whatever discussion takes place here, those who have ears will listen. Those who have eyes will see. And that is how we are going to go about it. And my final question, unfortunately, when we have festivals, noble elders like you know the reason why festivals are instituted. But too often, young people especially think of it as merely fun, merely having entertainment. How can you get them to see the seriousness, the real import of such festivals? Uh, it is not possible to remove entertainment from festivals. It is an ingrained quality of festivals, entertainment. But also, it's a message-giving platform that we will be able to deliver a message. We have speakers who deliver speeches. The messages they are going to deliver would be uh, informing, guiding, and advising that people should conform to a certain standard that will be uh, representative of who the Bursa is. So we believe that gradually it's not going to be a, a, bank, a one bank uh, situation. It is a gradual process that along the line people will get to understand that hey, we have to behave in a way that the Bursa man should behave. And that's okay. It is a gradual process. And let me add this. Our own conduct as elders, as uh, people who are older than others, will tell them what it is. We just don't speak, but we equally will have to act for the young to see and, and hear. Then they will know that, yes, this is a perfect Bosa person. So we just don't talk, but we act. Yes. Thank you very much for your time, gentlemen. Thank you. Welcome to our coverage of the Bosa Fjord Festival in Accra. Yes, um, sir. I understand you have a very rich um, history of public service. Yeah, yes, B both in and out of parliament. So we are most honored to speak with you. Um, first of all, we would watch, wish to ask you, um, what do you think is the um, significance of such um, festivals away from the heartland of Wilsa culture? What purpose do they serve? Yeah, I think the import of it being organized here is to give uh, the avenue for people outside the, the districts where our home who were unable to come for the festival to have some semblance of the festival here. Would you say it's fully achieved? Because we know that festivals normally have, apart from their cultural um, significance, festivals also normally have a social bond and they have a spiritual significance can these things be achieved when the festival is held outside the actual traditional area but the import of this particular organization is to galvanize the people outside the district who are in the diaspora and to, so that they can discuss issues about development but just used as a rallying point for the people to be able to discuss development back at home. There's kind of assistance that they can give to what is happening back at home. So would you say it is successful? I understand this is the third time this festival has been held in Accra. Would you say that your aims are, are being achieved? No, I, for me, I think this is the first. This is not the, the third. I'm not aware. I'm unaware that there was a first and a second. But I think this is the first that I've, of this kind that I'm participating in. And I think the young men who got together to bring about this thing, it's a laudable idea. I mean, the import is that, like I'm saying, you know, back at home, there are a lot of challenges. And it's only the people who are in the diaspora that can help us mold our place. You know, coming from the diaspora, you have a lot of other uh, things of benefit to the people back at home. 
And that's why we think that it's necessary that we come together. It's the time for us to come, reflect the, the habits of the, I mean, the events of the, the past year, and to see how we can strategize to assist the people back at home. So have you attracted enough people from the diaspora? I can see quite a number of people here, but I don't know whether you were expecting more people since their purpose is development. Do you think you've actually achieved the critical mass that you want to make development um, grow at home? The important thing is the first girl coming on, creating the awareness that this is happening here. And it is, it, the message will go far and wide so that even if the next time we're being or after that, if we are coming to hold a meeting to review the events of today, we will be able to look at what went wrong, uh, be able to improve upon it the next time around. So since you are here, what message would you like to send across to both the citizens generally, both here and, in, and, and at home, both here in the diaspora and at home, since eventually you are going to be seen on people's television screens? Which, what message would you like to say to your people, the Bolsa community? Yeah, what I will say to our people is that development is about the, the people. And it is also important that as the people, we should be concerned about things happening at home. And it's only when we come together to discuss those issues that we can send some, some kind of advice or assistance to what is happening back at home. Uh, as Bull says here, we have a culture. And one of the, 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 the aim of the, this gathering is to sell our culture to the people. Our culture is unique, and this is almost every year. So it is an opportunity for we in the diaspora to be able to look at what is happening back at home, discuss the issues, look at what we can assist, do to assist in what is back at home. So it is important that we all come together even if you are not here today. But when we call a meeting to review the activities of the day, you should come in to assist for us to see how we can march and move forward for our country, for our, our, our district. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, so what you to add yeah, um, sir, the, um, many, many booths are people in Accra and the metropolitan areas are professional people like uh, lawyers and teachers and service personnel. So do you think that um, you have achieved much in gathering a lot of them here? No, we, even if they are not around, that's what I'm saying. We want to create the awareness. The awareness has got that has been created and that the next time around, even if they were not, they didn't have the time to be around, then that well, what, they, they will be aware that this is what is happening and it is important that they be part of what is happening. So yes, because for the first time that we are doing it, we are going to have some hiccups. But as we go and we move along, we will be able to polish up and get everybody involved in the government of our place. Okay, we were, we were told that this, um, it's a festival which uh, defeats hunger. It defeats hunger. It's the festival for what? Which defeats hunger after the, the rains when the harvest. Yes. And also to commemorate how the princess defeated the slave raiders. So it's a very proud history. Yes, it is true. Okay. I am from Bulsa. You are from Bulsa? Yes, I'm a Bulsa lady. Yes. Uh, but I don't know the history much, but what I'm hearing about it is the same thing you are saying. It. Okay. It's how we defeated the slave trade. Yes. And what, after harvesting, yes. we come together to celebrate yeah. what we have. Yes. Do you, do you live in Accra? Yes, I stay. You are working in Accra? Yes. Were you born in Accra? Trader. No, no. Ah, okay. I was born at the north. Where? Sandema. Sandema. Yes. So do you visit often? Yes. Yes, okay. last year I went there. Okay. Even right. this year, uh, yes, during uh, the new year, I spent my new year at that place. You are a trader? There. Yes, I'm a trader. Okay. I don't work. Oh, that's but work. Polish, you can give me work. That's work. Trading is work. Have you ever been in, like, your hometown where you are from? 
once. Okay, so how do you see the festival? Is it okay or you think it needs something much? It's okay. So would you like to bring your friends over next time or you just want to come alone? I'll bring my friends. Thank you very much. Okay, um, is your hometown Sandima or Weaga? Both of them. Your parents are from Sandima and Weaga. You were born in, were you born in Accra? Okay. So do you know anything about Bursa history or the history of the festival? Okay, so will you ask your parents to tell you about the slave raider Baba II and how the Bursas defeated you? Okay, we are very happy to talk to you, okay? All right. What's your name? 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 Yeah, <laughs> Yes, First time being here? No, this is my second time, but, so how do you but the environment. Yeah, I've noticed that today there's much improvement. But initially the population was not like this. I've noticed that there's improvement. I've seen new faces. Yeah, initially, I mean, for the last time, the people that were here, what is interesting about this thing is that I've noticed that the important part of it is that people I've never seen before. And people have never expected to meet and like to see them there. Today I'm seeing them. And more importantly, there are some people that you will never expect that you get closer to them. But because of the festival sake and because of the same tribe, you will meet them. And through this, if you are even conflicts, the important part of it, if you and someone is having misunderstanding, through this you will become free then to create all sort of fun between. Yes, it has brought unity between we and them. Yeah, that's the most important part of it. Thank you. Are you Yes, I'm from Upper East Region. We are Gap Precise. Yeah. So, is this your first time? Yes, this is my first time. I'm witnessing this festivity and it's so great. And I would love to be part of it in the north. Beautiful things that you've seen. I've seen the horns and uh, the beautiful dresses, and I really appreciate it. I'm really looking. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Even though many of the Bula people in Accra who attend the Fiuk Festival may not be well versed in the history of their ancestors' battle to repel slavery, they still throng to the grounds of the impressive festival in traditional dress and in a spirit of association and kinship and joy. But the Bulsa Fiuk Festival is not just grand. It tells the compelling story of a fierce, proud people who stood up to pillage and bands who not only stole their lives, but also robbed them of livestock and property. The late leader of the Bulwa people, Nap Ayeta Azantilo, saw to it that the Fiuk Festival would be a tribute to the development-oriented nature of the celebrations. But not only that, the festival also honors the assertion that the Bulwa people are valiant, strategic and ingenious. The confirmation of this at the triumphant battles fought to repel slave raiders. The annual Fiuk Festival is like no other. Bearing in mind what history tells us about the transatlantic slave trade, it is undeniable that every person of African descent or every student of African history will be moved by it. It is a story that Africans need to tell over and over again and teach to their children and grandchildren. And whether one belongs to the Bursa ethnic group, the group who repelled the Zabrama slave raiders, 
or to the Zabrama ethnic group itself. It doesn't matter if one belongs to the Gonja and Dagomba ethnic groups who needed to pay reparations to the Ashanti and therefore were the first beneficiaries of the Bulwa victims or to the Ashanti, some of whose leaders sold these captives to the Europeans. It doesn't matter at all if one belongs to any or none of these ethnic groups. The transatlantic slave trade forms part of the collective history of the world and we must learn from it. We must study what was evil and what was Africa's involvement in it. Once the world is acquainted with this, there will be ways to prevent its repetition. Mm -hmm.